Welcome back, everyone, to Nanalyza Done. I am your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are in the last map for today. It's going to be, or the last replay, rather. It's going to be Mana 12 versus Sparkles on Shifting Sands, a map which, as I mentioned in the, in the last game, is designed around trying to be as accessible as possible to various different factory types, which. Okay, considering the size, is actually a little bit better than I thought. Like, I looking at the minimap, it looked a little bit like a proof of concept type thing. And I still think it's a bit more Delta Siege dry than I like to see anymore, but it eh, seems reasonable enough. I don't know. It's just one of the situations where the map does look like it was built for a very specific purpose, trying to do a thing. And I mean, I've done that before in my in some of my earlier map making days, so I'm just curious if the concept can be continued along, like having maps that are reasonably good for every factory, but I think that that's probably not likely to happen. Just the way that factories are largely in mutually exclusive situations like it's kind of hard for vehicles and spiders to work in the same situation it's kind of hard for ships and everything to work in the same map it's just i mean you can blop ships on this map and i suppose it will be relevant in a 2v2 or 3v3 match where you have someone here and effectively you have the ship lane again this is the thing about this design it is largely a dsd style design so you do you will likely get the lane style play when it comes to 3v3 or 2v2 but for 1v1, that's not so much of a thing. Of course, at the same time, there's also this ravine, which I don't think anything can actually cross. Now it looks like the water is just too deep for things to walk across. So, yeah, a lot of stuff here that, oops, that you can only get from air. Or get from happening to be in the one shallow section that you can walk across. My bad. Oh, yeah, there it is. There's like one grid unit that's impassable, but the unit can kind of cheese that. So clearly the design was to prevent units from going across, but it didn't work. Or maybe the design was to allow units to go across, but that one section just barely works, almost as a bit of a bug. So if whoever made this, if you're watching, I can't remember who made this. I think it was Manu 12, actually. But yeah, if you're watching this, or if you watch this on YouTube, just bear in mind that there, I'm not sure this is designed or intended, that there is this tiny little strip that can be passed by ground units, or if the point is that they're supposed to be able to pass those tiny strips, and those tiny strips are simply not close enough for it to come through in the Pathfinder. Or the Pathfinding display. Not quite sure how that's supposed to work. I do know that there are areas for fleas to wade along here. If you look, there's a giant purple blob. But the rest of the water is ground pathable. So, there is that. That is one of the things about this ground. is largely quite shallow. Which means it works for ships. Because most ships will work fine in shallows. Even submarines work reasonably well. Though I think there might be some technicalities in how they don't tend to submerge. Not entirely sure. That is one improvement to map design I've seen recently, is the fact that with maps, with water, we see a lot more shallows. Aurelian's a great example of this. And as you can see, yeah, the fleas are able to go around here, and as a result, Sparkle is able to harass reasonably well across the map, though unfortunately not able to actually do much, since already we have Lotuses set up. I mean, Manu 12 knows they're fighting spiders. They're going to set up Lotuses aggressively around the map because they don't want to be dealing with spiders that they don't have to. I mean, that's the best option. So I really agree with the way that Mana 12 is playing this. Sparkles, on the other hand, is not expanding anywhere near as quickly. I mean, they're having a bit of a hard time doing that. It looks like they just jumped their commander around back, expanded over here, and then pulled forward to the front lines again. But, I mean, at the same time, Mana 12 just has a bit of a better setup. They have better attrition. They have a better unit composition. They have more money. Sparkles isn't doing too terrible when it comes to their economy, but still, Mana 12, they have rogues, and Sparkles is going for Venoms. That's one of the reasons we don't see a lot of Venoms recently. Partly also, Fleas have been really effective on their own. But Venoms are basically countered by rogues or Ronin. Pretty much hard countered by Skirmishers in general. But Fleas, I mean, Fleas deal with the Skirmishers, sure. But why not just use the Fleas and prevent the Skirmishers? It's kind of the thinking. So... Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of Venoms ever since Fleas... Ever since people stopped sleeping on Fleas, Venoms stopped being used. So I'm not quite sure where Sparkles is going with that. Of course, the main thing is Sparkles is going for the red bag here, which is going to be effective against the bandits, so I think that might make sense. Like, red bag flea. Use the flea on the rogues, the ven or red backs on the bandits. Don't bother using the Venoms, but you probably will anyway. Can these go in... Oh, I see. So Fleas can't go in this one second here. Bandits can... Otherwise, everything can. Okay. That makes sense. 
And on top of that, man, we're able to get some very effective harassment going on over this out. There's this Lotus that will stop things. Like, this bandit, really, why is this going? Why is this continuing? Man 12 knows this Lotus is here. Or should, anyway. They do now. They have full knowledge of that Lotus right now. And at the same time, Sparkles' commander is at the bottom, which means this band is not going to be able to do much other than see what's happening right before it dies. So at this point, Sparkles is actually doing a reasonably decent job of just surrounding on Mana 12. Mana 12 almost feels like they're just pushing in. They expect... Oh, they have stronger economy. They probably realize they have a stronger economy. I don't know what they do. If they've seen that expansion over to the south has just been taken, Mana 12 probably realizes that their economy has been stronger for far longer, so they can kind of get away with attacking more recklessly. But it still feels like they can't. Like, yes, they kind of can, but no, not really. Like, don't go for it if you can help it. Just don't. Like, avoid attacking recklessly if you don't have to, especially when you're in this top section. I mean, really, despite the fact that the two factories are right next to this hilly area, I would say I'd like to see Mana 12 focus a bit more on going through the water. The fleas can't go through as much of the water, and overall, it doesn't provide as many advantages. Like, these hills are designed for spiders, so essentially, Mana 12 is fighting in Sparkles' territory. They're fighting in Sparkles' home turf. Mana 12 goes on the water, though, that's best for them. At least considering the matchup. Still, Mana 12 managing to overpower simply by numbers. So, there you go. Better economies tend to win. Although, at this point, the Redbacks are also going to get torn apart by the bandits. Uh, actually, they might. No, they won't. Sorry, Redbacks. Recklesses. The Recklesses will be torn apart by the bandits if the bandits stay under the shields. If the bandits stay under the shields. That's it. And at the same time, over to the south side of the map. Good. Rogue use getting rid of some of these lotuses, but unfortunately, the rogue not close enough to the bandits for the fleas to be defended. Or, ah, fleas to be defended against. Still, though, follow-up forces coming in here from Manu, so this shouldn't be a major problem. Not sure why this bandit's coming in here. It seriously has a death wish. I don't understand, but it's dead now, so it can't possibly explain itself. Because it's dead. And as we all know, dead people can't talk. Or at least as I insist. But, yeah, I mean, the rogue here is able to get rid of the lotus without too many issues. Possibly able to... Okay, it's going for the commander. Seriously? Oh, I see. He's doing his fight moved in. Trying to go for the commander. Can't quite get close enough without being in lotus range. Just go for that lotus. Get rid of the lotus. But at the same time, Sparkles is actually maintaining a reasonably good attrition. It's about even, but again, Sparkles keeps fighting in their home turf, so... Mana 12 just keeps losing units. And sooner or later, Sparkles is going to send a Weaver over there and start reclaiming. Looks like that sooner is sooner rather than later. This Weaver probably going to be the one to do so. And that's going to be just... You know, 400 metal in an easy spot. And there's a bunch of metal all the way down here the commander can easily take. So, overall, right now, Mana 12 is not in a great spot when it comes to overall economy. Once Sparkle starts reclaiming, things are going to turn around. Like, Mana 12 won't have a whole lot to really fall back on, because while they have expanded quite well in terms of static expansion, Mana 12 is still leaving a lot of stuff open for reclaim. Though, admittedly, Mana 12 is going to grab this bottom reclaim, so there is that. And also, it's not like Mana 12 has lost a whole lot of expensive units to Sparkles, so while there is Reclaim, and a fair bit of it, Mana 12 is taking advantage of it, about 500 or so, so you know, a good minute and a half of an extra 5 metal per second, Mana 12 is still ahead in terms of static economy. Like, Sparkles can only be even for about 30 seconds. So, like, even long enough to build another 10%, 20% maybe to their army. When you consider that this Nimbus is already here, and Sparkles now has to switch over to using... Well, their own gunships, locusts, or tridents, probably. Not, not going for tarantulas, that's probably for the best. Still, the Nimbus is doing a fine job just keeping itself alive. Unfortunately, that Nimbus will go down. There's not a whole lot of anti-air coming in from Mana 12. Nimbus got a little bit too incautious when it came to actually attacking stuff. But, at the same time, that Nimbus is still in a good position to help get rid of these redbacks, or recklessness rather, pushing them back. And also putting Mana 12 in a great spot to actually take on the entire south side of the map. The only stuff that hasn't been taken is the center. Which, I don't know why, maybe there's some pathing restriction I'm not familiar with. I, the interaction with water in this map is a bit wonky, but I think that that's perfectly pathable by, con by constructors. Still, it's a bit iffy. Where is the anti-air coming in from Mana 12? What are you doing? Where are you focusing? 
I managed off relying entirely on the sheer numbers of Nimbuses and allowing them to go down to the Tridents. I don't quite understand the logic there. There's no Razors. There's no Vandals. There's no Tridents of their own. Like, Man in 12, they are not doing well for attrition. They're doing okay for attrition in terms of overall army value. Though, Sparkles is ahead. 700 metal. And the Nemesis are trying to help with that, but again, it's not helping. There needs to be proper dedicated anti air coming in here from Man in 12, and I don't understand why they're not going for that. I mean, maybe the Man in just figures it's not a big deal? I don't know. Looks like a couple Nats came in and did some damage too, but yeah, like, I don't understand the logic here. I really don't. Like, Mana 12 losing a bunch of bandits for basically nothing, throwing them away into the Locusts. The Nimbuses look like they're trying to come around here and maybe get rid of some stuff. Not really sure. Again, there's no anti-air going on here for Mana 12, so that's why I have no idea what they're planning on doing here other than throwing the units away. I mean... Okay, these Tridents did put themselves in a really unfortunate position. Which is... A, that was lucky for Manu 12, but honestly, that's not going to last. There are more Tridents coming in here. Manu 12 also has to deal with a bunch of, of Sparkles' own Nemesis. Manu 12, they got plenty of economy. They've got loads of money to work with, but instead just going for Grizzly. That's going for, I guess, a solid hard push into the base. Considering they're already fighting against a bunch of Recluses, I don't understand the move for the Grizzly, because the Recluses are already there to counter it. That's not really going to help. That's not going to help anyone. Why is there no anti here? Why are there no tridents? Or if you're going for Amph, but why not have archers? I get not having vandals. Vandals are vandals are okay in large numbers. They're more defensive than they are offensive. It's just actually in this case, vandals wouldn't be a bad idea. Honestly, they against Nemesis, vandals can last long enough to deal with the Nemesis damage. But the problem is that there is no anti here whatsoever. I don't know what Manitou is doing. Finally, getting a razor up. But this is, I think, the first Razor that they've built at all. Sorry, second... No. Two Razors being built simultaneously two minutes after air has been revealed. So Man in 12 is clearly very confident they can just deal with everything with his one Grizzly. Maybe Grizzly with Nimbus support. And that's it. No dedicated anti-air whatsoever, despite the fact that anti-air has been the biggest problem. Although, luckily for Man in 12, Sparkle's being a little bit overconfident here, fo focusing most of their air primarily on the south side of the map, trying to get rid of Man 12's commander, which is going to be successful, even with the Razor up. The Razor won't be able to kill the Nemesis off in time. But, at the same time, over to the south, like, these red- these Recluses are being torn to pieces, there's nothing really dealing with that. The Grizzly could theoretically walk in here through the center and just wipe out everything. And it looks like it's planning on doing exactly that, though, at this point, maybe a Hercules? Maybe just use that to drop it into the base and wipe everything out. I mean, you got gunships. You might as well. It's only 700 metal. You can build a Grizzly. You can easily build a Hercules. I mean, clearly at this point, they want the Grizzly to be repaired and then walk in with a couple Grizzlies, but they have revealed the Grizzlies. And again, Sparkles already has the counter to that. Redbacks. Sorry, Recluses. Not Redbacks. Redbacks would die. Recluses already has the counter. Recluses in these mountains will counter the Grizzly. But, okay, I guess the idea is just to attack with the Grizzlies and then repair this one Grizzly and then fight from there, I suppose. Getting one Nemesis on top of that. I mean, Mana 12 very clearly focused on just winning with one big push, and I do not see that happening. Sparkles has the counters for that. Sparkles has been given plenty of time to deal with that, and Mana 12's commander, which is one of the biggest threats going along the south side of the map, stopping Sparkles from expanding, has been destroyed. So Sparkles is gonna, just going to wear away at the south side of the map over time. And already, Sparkles is basically even on economy. So the only real question is whether or not this Grizzly is going to accomplish anything, and I'm pretty sure the answer is no. If there were Tridents, I would say yes, but the Nemesis are going to be causing problems. The Recluses are going to be causing problems. The Tarantulas are going to be causing problems in case the Nimbus happens to come along. Like, not much is really going to be any better here. I mean, the Lotus is won't be able to do too much, so at least there's that. Manitou can still maintain the control of the south side of the map for the time being. But, yeah, there's an ambush right here. Manitou is already prepared, just waiting. They know exactly what's being built up here. They know what they can do with this grizzly. And, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a problem. At the same time, Nimbus is over the south side of the map, making sure that if Manitou does not win this with this one grizzly push, there won't be the economy left for them to rebuild. 
Oh, it does? Okay. Eh, fair enough. Chat's pointing out that Grizzly kind of counters Reckless, and I guess they got a point. Reckless doesn't quite deal damage quickly enough. So, fair point. Actually, you know what probably would counter this? Is Mass Fleas. For Spiders, I wouldn't be surprised if Mass Flea countered Grizzly. Just because of how low the rate of fire is for the Grizzly, and how quick Fleas are. Like, if the Fleas surrounded the Grizzly, they could probably tear it apart. Now, again, against this composition, no. The Nimbus would wipe out the Fleas, and the Outlaw would wipe them out as well if the Nimbus didn't get to them. But, you know, it might work. But yeah, they get a few Widows. Get a few Widows along with some, some Redbacks or something, and then the Grizzly's dead. But at this point, there is enough anti air, so those, it's, this assault might actually work. Manor 12 able to do quite a bit of damage. We'll be able to get rid of the Spider Factory, probably get rid of both factories on top of that. No Tridents were set up to help get rid of this. There were some before, along some Harpies, to help get rid of the Nemesis, but the Spider Factory is already gone. The Grizzly being stunned out by some Gnats. Good, good call there. But even with that, a lot of stuff in Sparkles' base is heavily threatened. Spider Factory is down, so ground forces are basically gone. At this point, Manor 12 can focus entirely on anti air if they ever focus on anti air. But the main problem for Sparkles, or sorry, for Mana 12 right now is their Grizzlies are completely locked down. Secondary problem is the fact that they don't have any anti-air and aren't trying to get rid of these Gnats. Because if they got rid of the Gnats, the Grizzlies would be fine. But no, the Gnats are just locking the Grizzlies down. Because why not? At this point, that's all Sparkles has is Gnats. Or just gunships in general. And at the same time, the Nimbus is going on the side of the map. The Sparkles are just winning essentially by fighting everywhere that Manu isn't, just harassing everything with forces that are way more mobile, when Manu 12 simply did not build anti-air. They finally have a few tridents, and that's it. Those are These three tridents are the only tridents that Manu 12 has built this entire game. The Nemesis do not care. There are honestly enough, as you can see, there's enough of them they actually can fight back against the tridents and win. Like, Sparkles just basically won by Manu 12 not going for the anti-air that they would have needed, being overconfident in this grizzly assault, which ultimately accomplished nothing. And, well, not nothing. It got rid of the spider factory, but ultimately didn't accomplish enough, I should say. And now Sparkles is just able to wipe out everything Mana 12 has at their leisure. On top of building a tank factory out to the south, because why not get that set up? I don't know, maybe throw in a Minotaur or Ogre or something and just, just clean everything up. At this point, Mana 12 is half the economy. They do have a couple of Grizzlies still inside of Sparkles' base. I mean, the Nats have been gotten rid of thanks to the Vandals. And some of the Grizzlies are still in play, so it's not like it's over. And the Vandals are helping get rid of every bit of anti-air coming in. So at the very least, now that Mana 12 knows there's only air units coming in, they're confidently building anti-air. Kind of wish they'd done that earlier, but it's sort of working out. Still, those Sparkles, they have finished the tank factory, aren't yet building anything up for it, but... They only have an economic advantage. They could very well just do that whenever they want. They just need to get it. Oh, they have the caretakers. Yeah, seriously, what's, what's taking so long? There we go. Cyclops coming in here to help get rid of the Grizzlies. Which might not matter, actually. The Grizzlies, they're back active. The Gnats have been pushed away or killed. The Grizzlies are going to wipe out everything inside of this base. This gunship factory is done. Most of Sparkles' economy was dependent on these wind generators, and they're gone. I mean, the rest of it's kind of dependent on some of these backyard things here, which the Grizzlies I don't think can deal with, but maybe I'm wrong. No, they can. They just go right back in the, in the back. This ravine is totally pathable to Grizzlies. Thought maybe they'd be too big. It wouldn't quite work, but no. The fact that it's underwater makes no difference. Of course, it, they're amphib units. They don't care. They can deal with water. So the Grizzly, Grizzlies can go around the back here and wipe out all these metal extractors, which Sparkles can't easily rebuild. Manu 12 has rebuilt over in the center of the map, having got rid of the red back way earlier. So... Mana 12 right now, actually not in a bad position economically, despite the fact that they lost basically everything. Able to counter against Sparkles, and now just able to push in. I mean, there's not a whole lot of defenses coming in. The two pickets, that's 600 damage. That's not going to threaten either of these Grizzlies. Which are, by the way, being actively repaired. So it's kind of a matter of time. The Cyclops is on its way, but it's... Okay, it's going to be done by the time the Grizzlies get there, so that's still a bit of a challenge, but honestly, it's not enough. There's two Grizzlies against one Cyclops. Sorry, against one Cyclops and an Ogre. So, fine, I can see that. Maybe. Still seems like a bit of a tough situation, though. The Cyclops will be able to get rid of the shields without issue because of the slow beam. But Grizzlies, that's, okay, that's 3k damage per volley. Grizzlies have, what, a 10 second reload time? 6 second reload time. So if they can last for 24 seconds, they'll win, but it looks like no. Manor 12 taking a page out of Sparkle's book, harassing the center of the map because, of course, I mean, get rid of that. Makes perfect sense. I mean, all this expansion here is what's keeping Sparkle's even with Manu. 
Actually, you know what this map reminds me of? Just all of a sudden, Isis Delta. But like a better, ver a symmetric version of Isis Delta almost. Not not quite. Isis Delta had more water and still a bit wonkier. But like if you took a Isis Delta and kind of took the idea and improved it a little bit, you get this. So, okay, I think this map's all right. I don't think, I think the concept needs a little bit more work. Like I think the idea of having this kind of flexibility is not bad, but there's there's room for this to develop into more interesting maps besides just essentially a DSD clone with water in the center. This isn't a bad setup for that kind of thing. It does work reasonably well. Just it, there's, I'm sure there's more that could be developed on top of this in terms of overall flexibility of map. Like maybe more rivers in between, like cutting water through things or having more mountainous areas because it feels like it's more like you have an area that spiders can fight in an area that ships can fight in but not as so much areas that stuff can fight against each other in general like you just generally use factories against factories it's more like in the way that most maps are fact of only a few factories you can play at all this map feels like there's only a few factories you can play in each chunk of the map in each lane of the map so that's the impression I get, like bots and spiders, like this area here is for like spiders primarily, maybe some bots. This area here is for bots, vehicles, ships, which is not a combination you necessarily expect. This area here, back to bots, maybe a little bit of vehicles. Amph bots will work reasonably well here. Like, you know, there's, it just feels like it's sectioned off. It's like three different maps plopped together. So you have th like three long maps that have different factories that work all beside each other or maybe two this second here kind of feels like a continuation of this pond yeah that's basically it so interesting map i think the concept does have some promise i would like to see a bit more development in terms of more aesthetically interesting maps or just generally more varied maps but yeah pretty neat as an idea so anyway with that i'm I, okay, Dime Friend, I am supposed to make it look interesting to the last second, but at the same time, if someone's clearly won at that point, it's important just to go, they've won, don't try to fake hype. Because I've tried that before, it just does not sound genuine. It's not worth it. Which is why I went to the map and discussed that instead. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. Thank you all for watching. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm glad to be back. And hopefully this will... I'm planning to get back to the normal streaming schedule where I'm like weekdays, usually Monday and Wednesday. Generally, it's been Monday for Zero K and Wednesday for Battle Ride, but I don't know. I probably should have a less fixed schedule at this point on the site, on Twitch, and on my banners because I haven't been keeping to it as well as I should be. But yeah, it seems like at this point, it's been kind of like Monday for Zero K at 7 p.m. PST, and like Wednesday for Battle Ride, kind of. But I don't know. We'll see. I'd like to. We'll just see what happens. A lot of it comes down to whether or not I can find games, which at 7 is kind of hard. I might start earlier. We'll see what happens. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Neat new map. I'm still not quite sure what to make, but I feel like there's potential. I feel like it could be a thing, but it still feels like DSD with a bit more water than anything else. So yeah. Thanks again for watching, and have a good night.